Method, welcome. If you're joining us at home, long foam roller on the ball, same thing almost every time. You're gonna start laying across the foam roller with your spine. We will use the ball later. You're gonna start by just breathing. So I want you to have your neck, drop your chin down and lengthen the back of your neck. And then make sure your pelvis is in neutral so you find your pubic bone and these two bones right here of the pelvis called the ASIS and make sure they are level, okay? That way your pelvic floor is lined up with your diaphragm and then you're gonna try to come up to your rib cage because your diaphragm is right around the ribs and you're gonna make sure that the diaphragm and pelvic floor are basically lined up on top of each other but horizontal, all right? And then you're gonna inhale through your nose, expanding 360 degrees. I spilled coffee on myself this morning if you see my stain. And then exhale, blow out through your pierced lips like you're blowing out your birthday candles. It feels silly to breathe like this because it's louder than you're probably used to, but you've got to do it in order to use your core, all right? And diaphragmatic breath has been proven to help you with your intra-abdominal pressure, which is the word I use a lot to explain this, but if you don't have enough pressurized um, tissue, your nervous system in your core, you will walk around with a lot of pain in all kinds of places. It could manifest in your low back, your hips, your neck, your knees, and a lot of times it's from lack of breathing correctly. Your diaphragm's not working with your pelvic floor, okay? So, if you don't want to pee on yourself the rest of your life, learn to breathe correctly as well because your diaphragm is a major part of your core and your pelvic floor working right. All right, so now we're going to take our right leg into tabletop. Keep your hands on the ground and you're going to lift your right leg and draw about a salt ball size circle with your right knee. And you're just inhaling and exhaling deeply. I'm going to start our relaxing music now. Reverse that little circle, going the other direction, keeping that slow breath, just relaxed breathing. All right, now put that foot down. Keep your hands down on the mat for balance. Lift the other leg and draw the smallest little circle, just kind of relaxing the hip as you turn it. It's like you're stirring in the joint itself. Okay, reverse that circle. Inhale and exhale. And place that foot down. We're going to open our knees and close our knees, letting our feet fall towards each other and then back down towards the floor. Now every now and then you can look up at your pelvis, just make sure it's staying neutral. If it's not, try to activate the muscles above the pelvic bones to really keep the core stable there. All right, let's hold that in. And we're just gonna rock our pelvis with our feet flat. So first, I want you to push down through your big toe and your little toe sides of your foot and your heel, that's called your tripod. Now pressing through the tripod of your foot, you're gonna rock your pelvis towards you in a little pelvic tuck and then rock it away. Your pelvis will not leave the foam roller, it will stay on it as it rocks. So it's just enough rocking to what we call, it's called a posterior tilt and an anterior tilt. It's also where your sacrum is and you'll feel your lumbar spine, the low back touch. Now hold it in between those two ranges of motion that's usually neutral, somewhere in those two extremes, you're going in the middle. Take your arms, reach them to the sky. We're gonna scissor the right arm up and the left arm down and let the arms go as close to the floor as you can and then switch. And you're planted with those big toe, little toe heel of the tripod of the foot so that you can stabilize. Deep inhales and long exhales. Your exhale should be twice as long as your inhale. My ideal is five count in, 10 count to 12 counts out, but it's okay if you're like at four and eight right now. 
If you have had past lung damage from like COVID damaged your lungs or you have scar tissue in your lungs, you do have, you can build up your stamina to breathe again with that scar tissue. You just have to work on it and diaphragmatic breath again. I cannot say enough about learning to breathe correctly in order to make your life better, right? All right, now take your hands up above your chest and then we're gonna open our arms as low as we can get them to the floor and feel that stretch of the chest. Just stay there allowing gravity to open up our body. Make sure your head doesn't start to arch backwards but you're lengthening the back of the neck by dropping the chin a little bit. If you feel a tingling down the arm and hand, it's a normal tingle but you don't wanna stay there too long so we're just gonna open and close. There's all kinds of nerves that run from the shoulder neck area down to the fingers. That's why when you hurt your neck or bulge a disc in your neck, you often feel numbness down your arm and hand. Hold the hands above your shoulders and circle those arms about the size of basketballs. And reverse. Good job, y'all. Let's put our hands back down on the floor. And we're gonna do a little mini bridge here. So walk your feet a little closer in to eat your body. And then you're gonna rock through your pelvis and roll up towards the middle of the blades. And then put your hands on your ribs and make sure the ribs are down and not opening up. And then you're gonna roll back down, trying to feel all the spots of the spine. And then do it again, rolling up feeling all the vertebra touch to the best of your ability. Use your front of the core muscles to roll back down. So it's like those muscles in the front are pressing each one of the vertebrae down and come back up rolling. Now that's a thing we say to explain it, but you're not sequentially articulating each vertebra necessarily. It's impossible to do that really. <laughs> They're too close together. But you know, you're just thinking of that, all right? Like that rolling down and rolling up. I'm just gonna walk around. I wanna see your ribs really connect in when you lift. Hold it right there. I'm gonna drop your ribs down. Give me some more oblique connections there, yeah. And then when you roll back down, you wanna really focus on lengthening right there. When you come up, really connect here. Oh, yeah. And then roll up and you wanna really feel that rolling through that spot when you get there. And I'll really press up with the butt and down with the ribs, yeah. Give me a little bit more ribs down, like down this way, yeah. Okay, you guys. Now we're gonna go ahead and take it to the side. So just come off the side of the foam roller, turn the foam roller long way, uh, across the mat, I mean, not long way. It's like short box on the reformer. <laughs> short foam roller. <laughs> All right, now put the foam roller at the bottoms of your shoulder blades. And then you're gonna put your hands behind your head like a hammock for the head and rest your head in your hands like I'm doing. Okay, I'm totally relaxing my head letting my hands and arms hold it there. So my arms are working a little bit. Then I'm gonna open up, and as I'm doing that, I'm kind of lengthening my neck in order to not go like this. You don't wanna be like that. It's, that's not a good place for your neck. You want to draw it outward, like give it space. And then this is where I feel like I need to stop. And so I'm gonna stop here and just breathe. I'm allowing gravity to help me open my spine. So this is called passive extension where you're just allowing the gravity to do it. In a minute, I'll show you active extension. Now with every exhale, if you can go a little deeper without your neck getting compromised, you can do that. All right, we're gonna take the foam roller and move it to the middle of our blades, which is only like an inch or two away, so it's not gonna change a lot. And then you're gonna do the same thing, lengthen the neck, relax it, and then open up wherever you can go, and stop and just hold the head where it is and breathe. So 
so much of our culture has things that we have to do, all of us. I mean, I don't know of anybody in this room that are professional dancers, gymnasts, or ballroom dancers, right? None of us are. And so we're not stuck in extension all day. We are stuck in flexion. And so this is a most necessary exercise for the human population that has typical jobs or typical lifestyles, right? Because of technology today. We, we bend our neck forward and round our shoulders forward. All right, now we're gonna roll to the top of the blades, the bottom of the neck area. Keep your pelvis on the ground. And then you're doing the same thing. You're lifting, lengthening the neck and then opening up to the best of your ability. Wherever your body says, that's it, that's where I need to stop, you stop and you breathe into that. Notice your shoulders, like my left one, I don't know if you can see this, is higher than my right one if I don't like actively open that left arm, all right? So notice those things about your body and you're trying to level them off. I'm tighter on my left side, so I'm fighting that by just trying to make it open up but naturally it wants to be right here. <laughs> now, as you're breathing, you want to melt deeper and deeper into the foam roller. Okay, now we're gonna roll the foam roller to the base of the cranium. It's like a roll pillow, and you're just gonna lay on it like a roll pillow. Now, just for future reference, you don't ever wanna sleep like this with a pillow. If you lay on your back and your head is like this on your pillow, that is terrible for your neck. So change pillows, okay? You want your neck in neutral, like my, I can do neutral laying on my back. So when I lay on my back in my bed, I move my pillow and I lay flat because I can do it. If you have a little bit of tightness and when you lay down, you're like that, then you need just a little pillow. It's different when you're laying on your side, okay? We'll talk about that later, all right? Now, right here. And you're gonna roll your, turn your head to the right like you're just looking right. Stay there and go side to side on that right side. Don't go across your spinal vertebra, which are the back of the neck vertebra. We're not gonna cross the neck, cross the vertebra. You're just going to them and back to the ear bone, behind the ear where that bone sticks out right here. Now, anything, because there's tons of muscles that attach right there. If anything is extra tender, like I'm extra tender over in the bottom of my ear on the side. So that's where I'm gonna focus. So I'm gonna keep my pressure there and I'm even gonna lean my body to the right more. So you can see how my knees are going to the right and I'm gonna kind of like go right and left into that spot and then nod yes and no on it. And then once you find a really tender spot, you just stay there, push and breathe. I'm kind of like pressing down through my head and breathing. Even around your jaw right here, is there's lots of muscles. That's how you move your face, right? And you, you do want to focus on those, even those muscles. And we are going to do a little bit of that with the ball today. They no longer do that bro jaw break for, um, what's it called? Your jaw hurts. Somebody tell me when TMJ. TMJ. Because number one, that was a bad idea. <laughs> but they do physical therapy for it now. They realized it's tightness around the joint itself and that you can do rehab for it just like you can any joint. Go to the other side, your left, turning left, and then you're going to roll towards the jaw. You'll feel the jaw joint and roll back towards the, almost to the spine, okay? Just feeling all those muscles, tish, all the fascial tissue. And then that spot, whatever, and then you can nod yes and no, or just press and hold. And now this is meant to be where you can ask questions. So if y'all do have any questions in the live class, obviously, please ask.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and take it to the middle. And what I want you to do is nod yes and just like see how small I'm moving right here at the very top of my cranium. I'm not over and I'm just letting my weight of my head rest and just really gentle. That's the very top of the cervical spine right there. Okay, kind of. Well, it's not really the top. It's hard to get to that part. But. All right, you guys. Now, we're going to move that foam roller. We're going to take the ball. We're going to use it to roll out our jaw. Um, and you're going to take the ball and put it on your jaw right where the joint is and just kind of roll little bitty circles and you're trying to let your mouth open like relax okay and then go side to side mine's tender but I would not know it's tender if I didn't roll it right my 16 year old just checking on he's calling me oh, okay I'm just gonna let my husband answer that one. Okay, take it to the other side. And then circle or move up side to side. If you have extreme shooting here, you probably do need to see it. Uh, it's, and you have headaches too, it's probably related. So I would go, there's a PT that's in town that works with a dentist here that I send people to that she specializes in TMJ rehab. But if you're watching at home and you don't live in Birmingham, I'm sure there's a TMJ PT specialist. Most of the time there's, there are in, in bigger city. I don't know about smaller places. But. Wow, really tight over there today. Okay, now we're gonna work on our hips. If it's too intense and you're using the ball and you're about to die, use the foam roller. It's still going to be intense. but um, And if you do have had a hip replacement or something, you're going to get on the scar tissue and you are going to roll on it. All right? You want to. Heather, I'm going to have you scoot that way a little bit. Yeah. Just so the camera that you sees me. And back, you can go back too. It'll get, you'll go under the camera. You're going to be on your sacrum. This is the sacrum. That's the flat part of the pelvis back here. You're going to get the ball like right by it, okay, and get on there. You'll feel the bone. And then you're going to go across towards the joint of the hip. So the old hip replacements were posterior. The new ones are anterior. Thankfully, they're a lot less invasive anterior than posterior. But if you did, have, does anybody have a posterior hip replacement? It's all anterior? Good. Okay. Yours is anterior. Yours is anterior. Good. Okay. Those are a lot easier to manage now. And they last, the redder joints. Okay, now hold it on there and like do a little circular motion when you find a tender spot. Almost most people are the, the piriformis area where your sciatic nerve runs. Um, and that's usually why it's tender is because that's a very big nerve. You got nerves in everything, right? You wouldn't feel it if you didn't, but that, vagus nerve is huge and it runs I said the vagus nerve it's not the vagus nerve it's sciatic nerve vagus nerve is here to here okay now hold it on that spot cross that ankle oh it really hurts <sighs> breathe into it okay your pelvis is super strong and stable at least it's supposed to be okay because it's transferring all the energy from the bottom of the body to the top and vice versa. So that's why your hips are so much stronger and more stable. No, you're like, here's the SI, you're lateral to it, yeah, yeah. Like glute areas and piriformis areas. Okay, now if you want to go up towards the glute, the glute, the big glute, your glute max, attaches up towards the pelvis tops and then crosses the butt and it goes, it's a big muscle. It's a big, big muscle. So a lot of people will tell me, I've said this a thousand times in here, I have pain here and they're pointing to the top of their pelvis. 
I'm like, well, that's kind of your glute fascial tissue too. I mean, it's your glutes are up there. And they're like, no, no, it's my low back. I was like, oh, it's really not. So your low back is above the pelvis, right? Comes into the pelvis. All right, now put your feet down together. Open and close that hip, that knee. And then open and close the knee by stretching it out and in. And you're just basically exploring your leg and just seeing what causes, what needs most attention basically. Mine is always the figure four right here, pushing into it like that. That's always where I find the most tenderness. All right, everybody find something? Yeah, it's hard not to. Okay, now you're gonna sit on the other side. Start at the sacrum area, start at the SI joint. See what you can find there, because sometimes you need to really give your SI some attention. And then go across, but your piriformis attaches here to here, it's horizontal. And so, we're just kind of trying to find it. It's a deeper muscle though, so it's kind of your glutes too. You're gonna cross those. All right, now stay on the spot. You think, hey, that might be a little tender, and then you'll find out by crossing the ankle. For me, anyway. If you felt more tenderness with the foot down or if it's too much, don't do it. And then you're gonna kind of do a little circular motion on the spot you found. And reverse. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Okay, now stay there, and then you're gonna open and close that knee. This shortens your piriformis, this lengthens your piriformis, all right? Shortens it, lengthens it. Yeah, that's pretty painful for me. Hold it here, and stretch out and in. Remember your hip and foot do work together. They are best friends and your foot is only as strong as the hip that drives it. So my left foot often causes me problems and my left hip often will hurt at the same time. Those are related. You address your foot, you address the hip and vice versa. All right, y'all, we're gonna take ourselves off of that ball, thank goodness, right? And then put it away. We're gonna take our foam roller again and work on some um, stretches and mobility. So we're gonna start with a stretch. You're gonna take your arms on the foam roller and you're, ro you're lifting your butt to roll to the top of the arm above the elbow. If you can drop your chest and lift your head a little bit, you're gonna get deep into those lats and into the upper back and thoracic area. But some of you might be very tight there and so you might go to like here and not go so deep and that's okay, and then roll back to the forearm, all right? And again, dropping through there, through your chest and armpit. What causes tight lats? So let's talk about it. The lat attaches up by the, the arm bone right here, it's kind of in front, and then it twists, it's really a cool muscle, and then it goes down past your armpit, and it fans out and becomes ginormous. <laughs> And it comes all the way to your pelvis and, spl and uh, spreads out with fascial tissue. So that is why if you're here a lot or you see a kyphotic person, like they're rounded in their upper back and they walk around like that, their lats are also gonna be tight. So for them to lift overhead is very difficult, okay? So being able to lay on their left arm or right arm is hard. So when you understand where the muscles attach and everything, it makes sense why things don't work. Because often I'll say, oh, you can't lift your arm overhead. I can see you're also kyphotic. That's why. And people are like, how is that related? So I'm like, well, if you see where the attachments are, it makes sense. And it'll hurt your low back. People's low back will hurt when their lats are tight. Many times. Okay, now I'm going to hold it where I can hold it. And I'm going to take that one arm under the opposite armpit and then try to drop low and just stretch under there. You should feel a stretch through your neck and your shoulder blade on the side that you're rotating.
All right, let's go to the other side. You'll feel your obliques even. All right, let's come up. Now we're gonna keep our elbows on the foam roller and we're gonna do hip mobility since we released our hip, okay? So you're gonna come up, open, and around. And you're just drawing a big circle with a bent knee. And I want you to take long inhales and exhales. And your body's gonna wanna try and lean. And so what you wanna do is if it's trying to lean too much to get bigger range, don't do it because you're trying to make your hip joint do it. These are, if anybody remembers what these are called, does anybody remember? It starts with a C, cars. If anybody remembers what they stand for. Yeah, close. Yeah, that, that, you could also call it that. But a cert, it's controlled articular rotations. And any of your joints can do these, okay? And I'll do a variety of them today. Reverse the circle where you're acting like you're resisting at every point of the circle, all right? That way you're in control. And this will rehab any joint. Okay, but these are those hip replacement prevention mobility exercises I'm always saying. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and switch. Now you're gonna work your upper body too because you're stabilizing on that bone roller, so that's why I like that because you're working on your stability of your shoulder blades while you're here. You're gonna come up and open to the other side. If you are consistently popping every time, once or twice is not a big deal. Maybe make the range of motion a little smaller or squeeze the muscles around the joint themselves more and see if that stops that consistent pop. Let's reverse it. Every now and then lift your head back up if it's dropping. everybody good now sit back on your feet if you've been working on sitting on your feet and it's still very tight no worries stop wherever you need to stop so if that's here it's okay you just stop there and then work your way up so over time though you want to see improvement until it's completely fine for you to sit back on your feet okay now we're gonna take our right foot forward and do our hip stretch so first push your right knee past your middle of your toes or your pinky but keep your heel down and you're just stretching your hip flexor. You can put your foam roller like this for balance too. Now control your core so you're still tightening through here, intra-abdominal pressure, there it is again. So if you look in the mirror and you're opening like this and you're just here, I want you to really focus on the core connection, all right? So that way it's just your hip. Now breathe. Right there on the exhale, hit your own abs like this and make sure they're tight and that you're not knocking your own breath out. If you hit your abs on the exhale and you could knock your own breath out, hitting and it hurts, you're probably still not creating enough tension, all right? It's a pretty easy way to test it. Now, you may not be able to bend your knee yet, but you're trying. So bend that back knee and you're holding on to the foam roller. You don't have to hold on to the foam roller. You can put your hands on your thigh. Now, some of you can reach your foot. I lean back to reach my foot and then I lean forward again, all right? 
losing my balance. All right, place that foot down. We're gonna switch sides. Push that knee past those toes, open that hip flexor, and then test your abdominals. Is the tension there? In pictures, you know how people often will hold their breath and it looks awkward in a picture? They're like, you know? And that's, you know they're not diaphragmatically breathing if you see that in a picture. Because if you, that looks a lot better, right? When you exhale and suck in and relax your shoulders. So think about that next time you're taking a picture. Don't suck in and hold your breath, but use your diaphragmatic breath and exhale. Okay, now bend your knees if you can. You may not be ready yet, and it's okay. You just take one step at a time, grab your foot, but don't settle for not ever doing it. At home, you can grab a strap, put it around your foot, pull it up, all right? And then check the core, where are your ribs? Okay, release that foot. We're gonna do our Z sit, which I do almost every class because it's so important. Okay, you're gonna sit with your, my left knee is back, but y'all do your right leg since you're mirroring me. Right leg, left leg in front, and that way you just act like you're looking in a mirror when you watch me, and that'll help you to do it, yeah? So in a mirror, you would come closer, right, and further away. And we're gonna use our foam roller today. Some of you have had major hip stuff, okay? So you may wanna, like, especially if you've had your hip replacements, you may want, wanna use a foam roller, because you're gonna need to push yourself up, all right? But if you haven't had major hip stuff, you may not wanna use your hands. I used my hands at first, just saying when I started learning this. <laughs> okay, hinge forward, engage your abs and glutes, push yourself upright, right? Use your abs and glutes to slowly hinge and lower. If there's a spot that you kind of just lose control and fall, that's okay. That, you're starting there, but you're working on control. Exhale as you lift and control it up. Exhale as you lower to control it back down. Yep, good. So keep going, y'all. Working on external rotation of the front hip, internal rotation of the back hip. You need both to have healthy hips. If you don't have good internal and external mobility in your hips, you lose the ability to move them. They ossify there, basically. That's the word. Sounds like mummified. It's kind of similar, okay? <laughs> they get stiff, in other words. A sweet 80-something-year-old lady came to me trying not to have hip replacement. And when I looked at her hips and assessed them, her hip was completely ossified. Like, I've never seen anything like it. I said, "There's, it's too late. Like, you gotta get a hip replacement. But sometimes, if there's still mobility in there, I'm like, let's move it, you know? Let's, and calcifications, diet is a big role in calcifications. <laughs> So calcifications form a lot by ill movement patterns, rubbing, but also it's a lot of what you're eating, okay? Okay, now turn to the side. Everything goes back to food. <laughs> Lean forward and back. So you're turning towards your front knee. I didn't say which one, sorry. And you're gonna rotate forward and back, okay? You're just kind of doing this little, I don't know, puppet kind of thing. Feels like a puppet. Yep, okay, you feel that in your hips, I do. Turn towards the other leg, same thing, lean and lean. So it'll be your left hand coming down to the floor in the front of your left foot, and it'll be your right hand coming back towards your right foot. Okay, now we're gonna hold this forward, hinge up again, push into the sides of the foam roller, and we're gonna turn to the right, hinge down. Okay, stay turned, I guess it'll be your left. Turn to your left, sorry. Lean forward and come up again, and back down. Good, one more, lean forward, 
come up again. Yep, now put the foam roller in front of you. Towards your left knee. Take your right foot around and put it down. Yep, and then you're gonna take your right foot back. Your left hip's controlling the back down phase, okay? All the way down. Now, I jokingly say, what we're doing is working on moving like a cat, not like the Tin Man. And so, literally, you have to practice that, okay? Lean forward, come up, sweep it around. All right, good job. We're going to go to the other side now, y'all. So, let's just sit back down and take our legs to the other side. Okay. Hinge forward and back for a second. Let's just do the hinge, get used to it. Now, if this is super painful, don't forget, I forgot to say this on the other side, you can use, like, if you want to grab, I think I have two mats under here, yep. We, what you can do is roll up something and sit on it. I had a client who she would sit on three pillows to get here. And then it was two pillows. Now it's one pillow. And then we just gotta work, you just work on it until you don't need any kind of pillow. All right, now we're gonna lean forward. Again, activate the muscles around the entire pelvis and core, and then hinge back down with the control. Inhale, exhale. I'm gonna go over time today, I can tell. <laughs> it's already time to relax. All right, y'all. Now we're going to rotate to the, let's go to the left first. And then we're going to rock forward and back. And you'll just feel all kinds of muscles. I feel them in my blades, my hips, around the knee. And it's proof that the fascial lines are true, right? Because <laughs> if you didn't have fascia, you wouldn't feel it in all those places. <laughs> okay, now turn to the other side. And I'm tighter over here. Wow, big difference between this side and the other. Come forward and back. Oh, I need to work on this. All right, come back to the middle. And we're going to hinge up and stay up. Now you're going to rotate to your right. And you're going to hinge back down. Okay, rotate center, come back up. Rotate to that side, come back center and put the foam roller down. Okay, we're gonna take our back leg, bring it around to the side, use your foam roller for balance. And if you need to put your knee back on the mat because it hurts, you can. Take your leg around. The, this hip is the control hip, it's controlling the motion down. So you think about squeezing that right glute. Okay, hinge forward. Right leg is stabilizing to help your left leg swing back around. Okay, we're gonna stay down now and you're gonna move your foam roller off to the side and we're just gonna lay on our back because we're running out of time. And you're gonna stretch out. And I just want you relaxing here. Now find neutral in your pelvis. So like right now, I felt my pelvis and I was not in neutral, so I'm gonna get there. And then hold the position of the pelvis. Now, if you feel like it's too hard, cause you do have to work your abs to stay neutral if you're tight in your hip flexors like me, like you can watch, this is neutral. Glass of water sitting here, right? Now, when I let go of my, look what happens, my hip flexors pull it. You see how now my water would spill? because my hip flexors are tight, they're pulling me that way. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, put something under my knees. So that way I can relax and still stay neutral. Okay. Take some inhales and exhales here, close your eyes. I'm gonna start to spray the eucalyptus spray. For anyone who doesn't like it, just wave your hand and let me know. Focus on lengthening the back of the neck as you're here so that you're getting the most amount of stretch through the spine. 
You can breathe naturally right now. You don't have to work on diaphragmatic breath anymore. Now, while we're here, you're going to start to flex and point your feet. So turn them back up to the sky if they fall out to the side and flex and point. Okay, now relax the legs and let them fall however they feel relaxed the most. Take your arms out and palms up to a goal post arm and just let your arms relax on the mat, on the ground or mat, wherever they are. Now stretch out your hands and fingers like in all directions, really getting space in this wrist and in the palm. And then relax. All right, now we're gonna take, like open your eyes and take one of your hands and just look at your wrist and you're gonna put the other hand on top of the upper arm. We're gonna do wrist cars to demonstrate how you do this here, okay? So just like in your hip joint, you go slow and you're gonna, I'm gonna spread my fingers out so you get most of the space in the joint and you're gonna circle slowly doing your wrist cars, okay? Really slow. Feel all those muscles in the wrist working. Now go the other way. I do about only like five or six in this one because I feel like I burn more than my hip. <laughs> And then you can build up your ability to do more. And y'all can feel that, right, all those muscles? All right, now switch to the other wrist. Now, when someone has like a carpal tunnel, osteoarthritis pain or something, we start with this, like a stretching out, a slow car, consistency. And many times, their pain goes away. Along with a good diet. <laughs> Diet will inflame your body so fast you won't even know what happened. Okay, now go the other way. Okay, now we're gonna just relax our arms by our side. One or two more deep breaths. Now you're gonna to turn to the side, remove your foam roller. You're gonna be in uh, like a fetal position, I guess. And then you're gonna push yourself up to a seated position, crisscross applesauce. You can do a lotus pose, half lotus, whatever you like there. All right, we're gonna do a neck car. You're gonna drop your chin down, sit tall first. You always wanna be in neutral to the best of your ability before you stretch your neck. And then you're gonna drop your chin, circle, slow and controlled. Now, uh, this is where people usually aren't so great at stretching the neck or doing the cars. You only go to about where you would go with your low back, right? When you do your low back, I don't ever want you going into an L shape with your low back, your neck is the same. You do lengthen, as you look up, but you're creating space. It's never drop the head to the back of the spine. That is dangerous. Also, if you're here and then you try to stretch your neck, look at that, immediately it's an L shape. So that's why your neck being here, your thoracic and your neck are also working together constantly, right? So, and shoulders, they all impact each other. 
All right, and then you can go the other way with that neck car. Okay, finish up this last one and stay right up to the top and y'all are done. All right, good job. You have a wipe to clean. If you're at home, thank you for joining us and we will see you soon on X Method.